The Pentecost is what brings us humans together and unites us. You know, I was reading a book in the morning of John Mayendorf, and he interestingly says that ecumenism obviously is necessary because what happened at the Pentecost we have reversed. Pentecost was there to bring all nations together. Christians have separated as many segments as possible, turning Christianity into fragmented religion. But what he says, interestingly enough, he mentions that Christianity, orthodoxy, he talks about orthodoxy, not all Christianity, is not a caste, it's not a religion, and it's not a sect. Meaning, what, what sect is, it's, it's a segmenting things, it, it's cutting off of, and it's, uh, separating things apart. Uh, what religion is, is a group of people can get together and figure out how to get to God. Christianity is the opposite of it. God came down, Christ our Lord, and embraced humanity. And then he sent his Holy Spirit to unite all of humanity into himself and to one another. What we have done is we have said, oh, I am better than you are, I am higher than you are, I, my, my theology is better than yours. What John Michael talks about is the truth. That the truth cannot separate people. And we need to, if we declare that we have the truth, I'm adding this, this study doesn't say this. If we declare that we have the truth, we should be united. If we have the truth but we're divided, it means that we don't have the truth. Because we all have the, our own truth. That's what divides us. If we follow the ultimate truth, which is Christ our God, which we, if we are led by the Holy Spirit, we will be united. Where is the ecumenism so uh, vivid? Is in America. Because if you go to Greece, there's no need for ecumenism, it's all the Greeks. The Greek church, right? It's the church of the Greece. You go to Russia, it's the church of Russia. There's no need for ecumenism, there's no, people come there, guests. They can stay and then leave. If you go to Armenia, the same thing, the church of Armenia. And that's the original way of the churches. When the apostles went to each country, they created the church of that country. What we have done is we have reversed it. It's not that the church, the Christianity in Armenia, or in Greece, or in Russia, or in Bulgaria, is the church of that country, but it's named after that nation. So when I say, I am the Armenian church, I am calling the church Armenian. Father Mandrop says, the church is apostolic, not of the nation's name. The church is Catholic, universal, not by the name of a, a, a particular belief or a particular theology. The church is orthodox because it preaches the truth, <coughs> not those segmenting, separating qualities that we have inserted into the church. But in the old countries that was not a problem because they were all of one nation. Each nation had their own church, and that was the church of that nation. Belonged to that nation, but the church identified that nation. When in America we have created, what uh, John Mayendorf says is, we have created denominations. Across the street is Christianity, but that's a different denomination. When you cross the street in Greece, you don't get to a different denomination. You get to the church of that other neighborhood, which is the same as yours. Here you can cross the street and go to another church, because it can be a Mormon church. It can be a born-again Christian church, it can be a Catholic church, whatever. Why not be in communion with that church? And America boldens this problem of Christianity, showing us that we are divided, that your brothers across the street are not in communion with you. You can't go to church with them. And therefore, in the result, what we do is call our churches by our own identity. On this side of the street is the Catholic Church. Oh, in that Catholic Church, this is an Italian Church. And that side of the street is a Catholic Church, but that is Irish Church. On the other side of the street, we have the Greek Church. Not the Orthodox, not the Christian Church. The Orthodox Church is not important anymore. The Catholicity of the Church is not important anymore. The Apostolicness of the Church is not important anymore. 
But what's important is my own identity that I have put on the church. If you cross the other side, that's the Russian church. We don't deal with the Russians. Let them do their own thing, right? We, we don't want to deal with them. And then you go to the Serbian church across the street from down here. And then you, you go to Watertown. I always use this example. There are five Armenian churches and they don't talk to each other. Even the nationality does not bring us together anymore. The one across from the Greek church is under the Syrian patriarch. That's what's important. Under who are you? And the other one on the other street, on the, on St. James, is under the Armenian patriarch. We have forgotten that all churches were established by the Holy Spirit under our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the uniting power of the church by His Holy Spirit. But we take our human qualities and I slap it on the wall of the church and we separate us from each other. So, if you let me talk, I'll talk until evening. <laughs> <laughs> but life is difficult. We need to be united. We need to be together. And I'm not talking even about going into one community and finding different groups. This is the group of this powerful person. That's the group of that powerful person. We, we have loyalties and, and, and submissions to different, uh, different movements, different mentalities, different ways of thinking. We're going to do this this way. We're going to do that that way. We go all the way to individual. I go to church, I don't care about them. I just go to church and then go home. In other words, I'm on my own. I'm alone. I don't care about anybody. So the church stops being a community. You can see what happened 2,000 years ago at the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to bring everybody together and throughout the 2,000 years we have come to a point where I am alone, on my own, a Christian by myself. I don't care about anybody else. What the church fathers say, a lone Christian is a lost Christian. So when you think that you don't belong to any community, it means that you're lost. You need to find yourself and bring yourself back to the community. If, as Orthodox, we think that on this top of the hill we're alone and we don't care about others, it means we're lost on top of this hill. We need to go and find the other Christians and unite ourselves to them. John Meindorf says that, uh, and we don't have to be minimalists. We, when we unite together, we shouldn't find the common minimum and gather around that. We need to proclaim the truth and be brave enough to embrace it and unite around the truth, now and forever, to the ages of ages.